All right, it's one o'clock. Welcome to the second coffee lecture of this series. And I will shortly introduce you to Medicines Complete, a uh, portal to search uh, a variety of pharmaceutical databases. Um, hmm. All right, well, now, what I want to be talking about today, uh, why do we need such a resource? Um, there is curated data in there, so experts have looked through it. Uh, they have also summarized the most important bits. It is regularly updated, and uh, it has a lot of references to uh, the primary literature. It's very useful for pharmacists, doctors, life sciences, researchers, and medicine chemists. The question you might be asking, well, you, you might also find a lot of the information on Wikipedia, but this a lot or a lot of it is about uh, medication about drugs and uh, maybe there you want to be sure that you have the most up-to-date information and also that everything you read is correct and has been uh, cross-checked by the experts um, so this brings me back to the three topics we're going to be talking about one of them is going to be about peppermint then something that is hiding out in peanuts sometimes and then the last one about the cough syrup that maybe today wouldn't be sold anymore in that form so what is inside this uh, medicine complete portal there is three resources martindale which is basically an encyclopedia of um, drugs but also other substances then there is clark's analysis of drugs and poisons and that is basically the only resource we have here at ETH that really focuses on uh, the analysis from biological fluids. So uh, it has information how you can quantify substances in blood, in urine, and other bodily fluids. Uh, and then finally, pharmaceutical excipients. So excipients are not the active ingredient in a drug formulation, but rather they assist. They could be for stability, they could be uh, for uh, slow release, and there is other functions, just uh, for example, taste. So let me dive into the database. Uh, yeah, you go to medicinescomplete.com. That's how you enter this. And then you have a search mask where you can enter something. And so I wanna uh, start with the peanut example. And if peanuts go bad, or if you're unlucky, they might contain aflatoxin. And so uh, we want to see what we can find about this substance here in these databases. You see, once I start typing, I already get uh, further information. So I'll just keep it as aflatoxin. And I search in all the publications. And we see we have a hit in the Martindale, the encyclopedia, but also we have a hit in the analysis of drugs and poisons. So let's quickly look at the encyclopedic entry, because that is not a very large one. Um, but it says, so that's all the text there is, and there is some references. And what it says here, and um, there are several forms of these aflatoxins, uh, B and G. And then there are some that are actually only metabolites um, that are found after it's been processed by animals. And then uh, can cause hepatitis and cirrhosis, so damage to the liver. And if you look further down, it's reported to be one of the most important carcinogens um, known in animals. So these compounds are really dangerous. Uh, don't eat them, please. And now we want to look a bit more about uh, these two substances. So we figured uh, B and G are the natural ones and M is the metabolite. And I haven't read up on that, but probably the M could stand for metabolite. The B is because this uh, compound shows blue fluorescence and the G shows green fluorescence. So that's how these naming conventions come about. Now, if you look at the detailed entry, we see uh, uh, structural formula here. If we go down a bit, then we also find out that uh, there is B1, B2, and um, they just differ here. Uh, one has a double bond and the other hasn't. The one with the double bond is more uh, toxic. Then we find uh, some basic information about the properties here. Uh, we don't find the structures for both, actually, which is a bit of a pity, but you can deduce what's happening uh, by uh, going through the text. 
You also have a cast number if you want to plug that somewhere else to maybe find more information that could be useful. There is analytical data. So we have a UV spectra for both, also an MS. And if we go down, now there's the analysis data. So here there is methods how you can quantify this with HPLC, information on the stationary phase, what the uh, liquid phase was, and also the limit of detection. There's the corresponding references. Uh, so you can also read up if maybe uh, not enough of the detail has been exerted. There's the same for syrup, uh, serum <laughs> for urine, and even uh, liver. I, Probably we need a bit more information to figure out how do we get the stuff out of the liver uh, into our solution for the TLC. And then there's others here, for example, for food samples, rat liver, and so on. So let's go down a bit. Um, there's also a review referenced uh, about different methods. And then finally, we have some information about what happens to these compounds in the body. Uh, so what do they do? How exactly do they interact and uh, cause the damage that they do? And then if we go further down, uh, there is different uh, information on the levels of uh, how much is allowed to be, for example, in different food sources. And you can, for example, see that the UK and the American rules differ by a factor of about five of how much is permitted. Uh, and then this I find also interesting. So there was a large outbreak of aflatoxin poisoning. And uh, so there were 17 victims and they have been analyzed. And you can see how the toxin accumulates in different body tissues. So here, for example, in the liver, and you can compare that within the same person for the brain or the lung. And so you have different of them. So that was this first resource. Then I want to jump to the Next um, topic, so we had the peanuts. Let's look at this cough syrup in detail. And especially I want to see if uh, maybe even today you can use morphium as a as an uh, anti-cough medicine. Um, so let's look at this. Um, I type in morphine. And again, um, this time I just want to search in the Martindale in the encyclopedia because here now the entry is a bit larger. So uh, that you can also appreciate what we can find in here. It starts with the uh, morphine, uh, the parent compound. If we click on this, then we get a bit more information, also cast number. Uh, we even have street names in here. Then you can learn that this is also called sweet cheeses on the street. Um, I would have loved to have some sources also in, in which country this was the case. And then if we go down, um, there is a, a mention of morphine hydrochloride, but not too much. And then the most detailed entry is on the sulfate because that's the most commonly used one. And also there's the tartrate listed, but there's not much detail either about that. So, but about this is really large. There is uh, information on what it's incompatible with. Uh, and th there's really a, a long list of things that you should be uh, careful about with the respective references. And we have intro, uh, information on how you can do intravenous preparation. So uh, very applied information here. Uh, also with the corresponding references, oral, topical preparations, and so on. Then, uh, of course, what are the uses? So before it was more focused, what other medications is it incompatible with? Now is uh, what are the use cases? And I think... Um, let's quickly check. This should be here in the users and administrations. We can see here it is an effective cough suppressant, um, but uh, codeine is typically preferred because of the dependency issues. Um, but it's apparently still used uh, for a cough in terminal lung cancer that obviously must be so strong uh, that the benefits outweigh uh, the risk us and uh, the side effects associated with this medicine. Um, so then there's a, lot of, uh, a large list of pain and dosage information. Um, and if we go further down about how to uh, administer the corresponding infusions. Uh, if we go further down, I want to highlight, so there's uh, more information, dependence, adverse effects, precautions, um, maybe the pharmacokinetics. Uh, again, as we've seen before with the 
toxicity information about the me uh, mechanism of action. We also find here uh, information about what happens with uh, this substance and where does it go within the body. With that, I want to quickly finish up with the last example that would be the peppermint one and what is one of the main ingredients in peppermint. It's a uh, Oh, now I forgot the name. <laughs> no, it comes to me again. That is obviously menthol, uh, which is responsible uh, for the effect that you have in uh, many menthol chewing gums, for example, that it feels slightly cold. And uh, so let's quickly check this out in the excipients section. Uh, what we can find here, again, there is a lot of information. Uh, here it's menthol as a racemate. There is a synonyms, cast numbers, formula, even the structure. Um, and then there is actually a list what this is used for, that it has this uh, purpose of, of flavoring agent. Uh, and then also what are actually the concentrations that is typically used. So if you were to develop some sort of formulation, or you work on a substance and you want to because maybe it doesn't taste so nice. So you wanna cover the flavor with menthol. Um, so you could look up here how this could be done. And then there's a lot of physical chemical information and also uh, references to the respective pharmacopoeia, um, where also sometimes only the racemate is included and sometimes it needs to be the enantiopore compound. So you, you have to be careful there if you venture out into the regulatory uh, area. There is spectra of different kinds. So here we have IER, we have, uh, I think this is a, a Raman, uh, we have either powder diffraction, so that there's really a lot of, of primary information. There's some safety data. You see there's really a lot tel tolerated, 10 grams per kilogram of red. So this is uh, not so toxic, um, but it can also be irritating. And with that, I want to finish up. Uh, so we have had the menthol. Um, please help yourself to a coffee lecture card afterwards that summarizes again what I've told you about. And for those of you online, um, yeah, you can just download it. And then I hope we see you again tomorrow uh, to hear about the Know It Anywhere, uh, Know It All uh, database. Previously, we have mostly talked about the Know, know It All web interface, which is called Anywhere. Um, but the actual uh, software system uh, that uh, offers many more possibilities that you cannot do via the web interface. So if you have advanced problems in analyzing spectra, that could be helpful for you if you are from the analytical field. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask or unmute if you are joining online. And I will happy try to address, yeah. to medicines complete yeah so you need to be within the network to access it so if you are doing it from home you will need a vpn but uh, if if you are here then uh, you should just go to the website and then there's no login required no it was just the three that i now uh, showcased so there's many more in there uh, but uh, we have not licensed them it's the, the Martindale, it's the, uh, I have to quickly check again. <laughs> yeah, so the Clarks and the excipients, so these three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if there are no more questions, then I thank you again for your attention. And I hope you join us again tomorrow for the Know It All Spectroscopy software. Thank you very much. Bye.